Hey guys, welcome to Edusception. In this video, we move forward with the next question of commerce. We start with section B. Question number 5A. Modern marketing has created several non-traditional markets. Explain the main types of non-traditional markets. I'm going to explain you only the five type of non-traditional marketing. The first one is the catalog marketing. In this type of market, a catalog and a sample of the product are kept in the showroom. The catalog contains the detail of the goods and its prices. The consumer selects the good by reading the catalog and examining the sample. Now the second one is the in-house marketing. In this, ma in this type of marketing, a salesman comes to your home and tries to sell his products to you. Third one is the mail order marketing. In this marketing, the seller mails the price list and other publicity materials to the prospective buyer. The consumer place the order after reading the advertisement and the mail literature. The goods are dispatched through VPP or courier. Now the fourth one is the telemarketing. It is a very simple marketing and you also know about it. The, the product which are advertised in the television or newspaper is known as the telemarketing. Now the fifth one is the very common and a very simple way of marketing that is network marketing. You also know this marketing as an online marketing like for example Flipkart, Amazon and etc. Now question number B, explain the advantages of branding to producer and consumer. So first I am going with the advantages of branding to producer. The first one is that a producer can create a marked preference of his product by constantly repeating the brand name to the public. And the second one is that branding helps to minimize the selling cost by reducing the dependence on the middleman so it creates a direct link between the producer and the consumer. Now the advantages of branding to consumer. Now the first one is that branding helps the consumer to identify and recognize the product. And the second one is that branding ensure the uniform standard of the quality and the design to the consumer. Now number C, explain the maturity stage and the decline stage of the product life cycle. So in this question, I'm going to show you a graph. So guys, here we have a graph of product life cycle. The question has asked us to describe about the maturity stage and the decline stage of the product life cycle. So in the maturity stage, the sales of the product increases rapidly and reaches to its peaks. Here you can see in the graph and after that, it starts to decline this part it starts to decline in this stage you see both the growth and the decline of the product now here we comes to the decline stage of the product life cycle in this the sale of the product decreases rapidly as the product is gradually displaced by the new product or the superior product so unless a new use of the product are found, the sales may decline rapidly and the product may soon go out of the market. So now question number 6a, explain briefly the various element of cost. So there are three basic elements of cost that are material cost, labor cost and expenses. Now the material cost refers to the cost of the substance from which the product is made there are two categories of material cost that is direct material and indirect material. So the direct material refers to the uh, materials which are the part of the final product and the indirect material refers to the those materials which are not directly assigned to the finished good. Now the second one is the labor cost, the cost of the human effort required for converting the materials into the finished product is called labor cost for example workers supervisors and managers now there are two types of labor cost that is direct labor and indirect labor direct labor the labor which can be wholly and directly identified with a particular product is called direct labor now indirect labor the labor which cannot be wholly and directly identified with a particular product is called direct indirect labor now the third one that is expenses the cost incurred other than on material and labor for the production and distribution and for the management of the organization are called expenses. Now there are two types of expenses that is direct expenses and indirect expenses. Now direct expenses the expenses which can be wholly and directly identified with a particular product are called direct expenses. 
and now indirect expenses are those expenses which cannot be wholly and directly identified with a specific product or job is called indirect expenses now question number b explain number one the dual expect principle so this principle suggests that every debit has a corresponding and equal credit suppose if x buys a car of rupees 3 lakh he will get the car and will pay cash rupees 3 lakh so one account car will be debited with rupees 3 lakh and another account of cash will be credited with 3 lakh now number two the going concern concept according to this concept the transactions are recorded in the business by not seeing the time it is recorded as if it is going to last forever now number c write five difference between receipt and payment account and income and expenditure accounts so the the difference between the receipt and payment account and income and expenditure accounts are receipt and payment account is a summary of a cash receipt and cash payment whereas income and expenditure account is a profit and loss account receipt and payment account is a real account whereas income and expenditure account is a nominal account receipt and payment account is prepared to know the cash balance at the end of the year whereas income and expenditure account is prepared to ascertain the surplus at the end of the year receipt and payment account is contains both capital and revenue items whereas income and expenditure account contains only revenue item income and receipt and payment account start with the opening balance of cash in hand and at bank whereas income and expenditure account has no opening balance question number 7a explain any two function of the reserve bank of india the main two functions of reserve bank of india are issue of the currency note the rbi has the monopoly over issuing the currency note in the country in order to inspire public confidence in paper currency the central bank kept reserve of gold silver and etc for issuing the currency note now the second one is banker to the government the central bank act as a banker agent and advisor to the government as a banker it receives and make payment on behalf of the government the central bank serve as a government agent in financial matter it advise the government in the matter related to the monetary and banking policies question number b explain selection interview and checking reference as a step in the selection procedure selection interview an interview is a purposeful exchange of ideas and information between two or more person interview serves as a means of checking the information obtained through the applicant form and test it also provides the opportunity to the candidate to get information about the job and the company now the checking reference candidates are generally required to give the name and address of two or more person from which the information about the candidate may be obtained these persons are called reference they may be the head of the educational institute attended by the candidate or his previous employees this reference are requested to provide information in the confidence about the candidate character number c explain number 1 industrial advertising the aim of this type of advertising is to build a favorable image of the organization rather than to promote the sale of the product or the service number 2 concept advertising this type of advertising advertisement is also called as the primary demand advertising its purpose is to simulate the demand of a new type of product advertisement designed to change the lifestyle of the people in concept advertising thank you for watching this video next part is coming soon